Today in this 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee, we'll be having a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster EZ4 base plate kit with removable arms. Part number RM-521-440-4. Here's what our base plate looks like installed. Now what sets this base plate apart from other options in the market is how clean it looks once it's installed and not in use. With the removable arms taken out, the socket on the base plate goes right inside of where our tow hook housing is, maintaining a nice clean look in our vehicle. With the arm not in place, the furthest point out is our safety cable attachment point right here. Now, this part is still behind the leading edge of our bumper, so we don't have to worry about walking into it when we walk around the front of the vehicle. It even provides attachment points to these two prongs for electrical connections that we may need and a mounting point for a breakaway switch for a supplemental braking system. The removable arms are super easy to use. We'll make sure that our tab here is horizontal, push it in, and then we'll twist it 90 degrees until our pin spring loads into place, locking it so we can't rotate it. When we want to remove it, we simply pull the pin back, twist 90 degrees, and pull it straight out. Both sides work the same way. Now one thing that our customers have noticed that even over the course of a very long period of time, that even though this pin is a movable piece, it doesn't seize up and they're still able to easily use it to remove and put the arms into position. What's great about these removable arms is that they have the ability to be used with a wide variety of Roadmaster tow bars, giving you a great amount of options when you're choosing the appropriate tow bar for your Grand Cherokee. For this particular flat tow setup, we used a Roadmaster EZ4 base plate kit, a Roadmaster Sterling all-terrain tow bar, a SMI stay and play duo braking system, Roadmaster universal high power diode wiring kit, and a Roadmaster stoplight switch. Depending on your application, you may need to purchase a high-low adapter to maintain a level tow bar. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we'll find ourselves at the front of our Jeep with the hood open. We'll have two plastic fasteners to remove where our fascia meets our core support, one on each side of it. The way these work, there's a center section that you can pop out with a flathead screwdriver or trim panel tool. Lift it up, then you can go underneath the entire section of it and pull it out. Now in each one of our wheel wells, we'll have three fasteners. We'll have a 10 millimeter bolt here, and then two plastic fasteners just like we saw up top. So we'll go ahead and remove these on one side and then repeat the process for the other side. Keep in mind everything that you do on one side, you'll need to do on the other. And these come out just like the ones we did on top. Just pull up the center and the entire clip will follow. Now if your vehicle is equipped with a plastic wheel liner around the fender, such as ours, you'll need to grab it and pull it away from the fascia, just like that. Underneath, where our splash shield meets our fascia, we have several 10 millimeter screws to remove and several plastic fasteners to remove. We also have some fasteners that are plastic, but these are different because they twist in order to remove. You just turn them counterclockwise and they'll pull out. Now where our splash shield meets our skid plate, there's two 13 millimeter bolts to remove. We'll now remove the other two bolts that hold the skid plate up itself. take down the skid plate and pull down our splash shield. Now where our wheel liner meets our fascia, we have another turn to release plastic fastener. Now with an extra set of hands, we can remove our fascia. We'll hold our wheel liner back and grab our corner of our fascia right where it meets the fender 
and pull back. We'll lift up at the top near our headlight. We'll pull it away from our vehicle. And if you have fog lights, you'll need to disconnect those. In order to do that, you just take this black tab on each side of the bulb, pull it away, and you can disconnect it. And then we'll set our fascia aside where it won't get damaged. Now on each side, below our bumper beam, on our core support, there's a 13 millimeter bolt that we need to remove. Now looking up at our frame rail on each side, we'll see threaded holes, and this is where our installation hardware is going to go to secure our brackets for our base plate. We'll take one of our long 10 millimeter metric bolts, a lock washer, and a fender washer. We'll put Loctite on all of our bolts. We have the Loctite available on our website if you need it. From every bolt that we use from this point forward, we'll be putting Loctite on it. We'll now take our base plate, line up these two spots here with threaded holes, insert the bolt through the base plate, and thread it into the frame. With those bolts started, we can now snug them down. Put some Loctite on the factory 13 millimeter bolt that we removed, and we'll reinstall it. We'll now torque the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Now we'll take one of our wall pipe spacers here and slide it above our base plate between the bumper beam on the outside edge of the base plate. Take one of our half inch bolts with Loctite on it, a small flat washer. The bolt will go through our base plate, the wall pipe spacer, and the bumper beam. We'll place a large flat washer on top now followed by a lock washer, and we'll thread on a nut. And now snug down our hardware. Okay, now we'll torque that bolt to mount specified in the instructions. We've gone ahead and put on our passenger side base plate. It is the exact same process as the driver's side. Now, if you're not going to be installing any wiring or braking system, you don't need to worry about attaching this center beam. However, if you do plan on using any wiring or braking system, we'll show you how to install this on the driver's side. It's the same as on the passenger. Now, regardless if we're going to be using the wiring bracket or not, we need to drill a half inch diameter hole through our bumper beam right on the inner location right here. We'll drill a pilot hole first and then enlarge it to the appropriate size. Okay, with the hole in our bumper beam now drilled, we'll take another one of our wall pipe spacers and we'll slide this between the base plate and the bumper beam over that hole. You may need to use a screwdriver to help align it. With our spacer now lined up, so our bolt goes through the base plate, the spacer, and the bumper beam, we'll take our bolt, a lock washer, a large flat washer, our wiring bracket, if we're using it, go through the wiring bracket, the base plate, and the spacer, and the bumper beam. You see where our bolt goes through our bumper beam? We'll now thread the bolt into our handle nut. With our bolt started into our handle nut, we can now tighten down the bolt. We can now remove our handle nut just by twisting it off. And now we'll torque that bolt to mount specified in the instructions. 
So now we're looking at the back side of her fascia. We need to remove the knockouts for our factory tow hooks that our vehicle does not have. If you have factory tow hooks, you don't need to do this step. You're already ready to go. So we have one of these knockouts on both sides of the fascia. And to remove them, we simply push in on these tabs surrounding it on the corner, and it'll pop out through the front. Now, before we put our fascia back on, this is a good opportunity to mount any wiring harnesses that we may have for our tow vehicle lighting system or a breakaway switch for a supplemental braking system. Now with an extra set of hands, we can reinstall our fascia, making sure any electrical connection that we undid, we plug back in. Now that we have our fascia back on, we may need to trim around where our breakaway switch and our wiring is so that we could actually use those connections properly. To do that, I'll just use a pair of side cutters and cut out the area around our breakaway switch. That'll give us the access we need to use our connection for the breakaway switch. And that completes our look at and install of the Roadmaster EZ4 base plate kit, part number RM-521-440-4 on this 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave a comment if you have any questions.